Yo people, it's Joey here from Benchview TV and I'm here to interview my good friend Mandela Egbo, former England Youth International and current Charlton footballer. Let's get into it. You don't get a new contract, that's my fault. Yeah. So he's wow. on he was in the business of teaching and I realised I'd been scouted for England. So talk to me about that then. And I'm back to school. Straight after school I'm going back. So game changer for me was they brought in a guy called Otto Addo. That next kind of period is what leading up to like my, my Bundesliga debut. Now. Mm -hmm. Obviously making a Bundesliga debut now. Yeah. What was that? What was that like? What was that feeling to finally say, yeah, I finally touched pitch as a pro? Like, Bro, that was such a big relief. That was such a big relief because um, it was a lot of work and blood and sweat and tears coming man of course um but at the same time there was always the feeling of nah man like this just had to have i have to get more of this because mm. it's overdue like there was a less i can celebrate this and more this should have happened time this should have happened yeah so i know i never i never really took the time to really celebrate it Mm. As I don't feel like I should have, I feel like it was just all about the next one and the next one and the next one. But your appetite more, innit? Of course. Mm. So as you can imagine, as I'm sitting on the bench the next weeks, the, the, the weeks after that, I'm just like bursting to get on the pitch. Yeah. And um, for whatever reason, it never happened, man. It never happened. Sitting on the bench, going to places like mine, you know, playing against Dortmund, etc., etc. Yeah, going to these iconic ground, these big grounds. Big grounds. Get just, on them. Yeah, unfortunately, never getting back on the pitch. But that debut in itself, I know we was um, we was a few games. We was on a bad streak. We hadn't won in like seven. Yeah. And then we go one nil up, and there's an injury, and um, obviously I get the call. We come on, we hold the win. It's the first win in seven games. It was, you know, the bonus was sweet as well. Mm. <laughs> mm. Yeah, the bonus was alright as well. I was like, yeah, man, I just need need more of these bonuses. That's good, man. That's good, man. Like I said, it's a long time coming. After the appetite more to obviously get back on the pitch and really start pushing on and stuff for your career, and for Gladbach, of course. So, obviously. It didn't work out that way. Mm. But that glad back, you went on loan. What was that little loan period like? It was a permanent. It was a permanent? Yeah. So that was I think my third year of my contract at Gladback. Last year my contract at Gladback was up and down lots of training. Train trained pretty much full time with the first team and just never wasn't involved. Yeah. As you can imagine that's tough, but I'm in my last year. So I'm just like I'm thinking about how can I make sure that you know, I'm in the spotlight for clubs that are coming in for me and at the time it was a German champ championship. So um I ended up going to Darmstadt at the end of my contract. That's that was a Darmstadt, permanent that's yeah. Darmstadt, yeah. Darmstadt, um they'd been in the Bundesliga a few years before that. Mm -hmm. So it's a fairly big club, great following, great fans, great setup. Just as I was going there, they was transitioning. So they knocked down one of the, they was building the stadium basically from scratch again. They knocked down one of the, um, one, of the stands. one of the stands, building it fresh. They just built up a new training facility. Pitches were always perfect. It was a great, great club. And what they've gone on to do since then is amazing. They're gonna get, if they don't get promoted this year, it'll be a shock. Last year they was, I think they finished maybe third and didn't quite make it through on, um, in um, um, that playoff game, I think. And um, this year they're flying. I think they're top of the league at the moment. So they've, they've. I just showed you the steps they've taken. Yeah, of course. So yeah, I went there. Did six months there. Up and down again, playing, not playing, playing, not playing. Mm -hmm. And then um, the New York Red Bulls opportunity came. Yeah, that's another. That's what I wanted to get into. So talk to me about that. How did that one come about? Um. Well, there was a scout in Germany called Paul Fernie. He's an English lad though. Oh, okay, I thought he was in America. I'm like, no, he's right. an English lad who scouted in Germany and then moved to America. So his progressions were the same as mine. Okay. And I'm guessing he knew as I was he knew who I was as a kid coming from Palace going to Germany. And then obviously he was scouting man all through his time in Germany. Yeah. I found out later that he wanted me to move to where he was at a few 
a bit earlier and my, my agents at the time just never told me. Yeah. Wow. The German agent at the time mm. never told me, so obviously that's a different story. Mm. But um when he went to the Red Bulls, he then got in contact with my new German agents at the time. And he's like, listen, we I've been scouting money for years. We need a right back at the club. Would you be willing to make that that shift, that move? Mm-hmm. And um, it was a time in my life where it was going through, it was tough times, man. My father had just passed. I'm talking about that same month that the interest came about. Mm-hmm. And I'm like to Darmstadt, look, this has come about. And um, I think I just want a change of scenery. I've been in Germany four and a half years. Long time. Long time, mm. you know. I just wanted to get back to hearing people speaking English again. Mm. I just wanted to get back to familiar faces. And although it was further away, going to New York, New Jersey, it was closer to home in that I was seeing more familiar faces. I was obviously able to just speak English mm, again yeah, on a daily basis. A bit more comfortable. A bit more comfortable. And um, I decided to take that leap. Yeah. Whole different leap to the one before, but yeah, man, I just wanted to, I wanted to try something new. Leaving Germany, touching down in New York, Elaborate on that, like obviously flying over the pond, Englishman flying over the pond comes with a lot of things, of course, as we know. What was that like signing to New York Red Bulls? That was that was cool, man. It was um, it was mainly the New York thing, as in the franchise, that made me want to do it. Mm-hmm. Their links with so the Red Bull thing, the um, the links with obviously Leipzig and and Salzburg. So um that path still being very much Europe is there. Mm-hmm. I never wanted to go out there and stay out there. I wanted just to have that path back into the top leagues and obviously being in the top league of the, um, of an, in American football, soccer. Mm-hmm. So obviously it's always good to be there than, you know, lower down the leagues anywhere else. That's what I thought at the time anyway. Mm-hmm. Spoken to my boy, oh my gosh, my boy Anton, who passed a couple of days ago. R.I.P. Anton Walks. R.I.P. Anton Walks, man. Mm-hmm. He was the, person that I had that had seen that had done it he went to Atlanta and you know it was on his second spell in Atlanta so he just told me about the whole thing um, I knew him obviously just from South London just from Palace Tottenham playing against him etc etc so he talked me through it all and he was loving it and I said listen there's the links back to Salzburg's Leipzig if everything goes well if not I'm still in an amazing place yeah, of course like an amazing place to live and Anton saying that the league is just nothing but good things, words for the league. So I'm like, yeah, let me, let me, let me do it. And there's still exposure as well because the MLS was on Sky Sports now, and it's mm. like you're yeah. still obviously people are still aware of you and not yeah, again yeah. hiding, but not hiding, but you're not, you know, being kept away yeah. from yeah, no, spotlights still there. There's that, there's that, and a lot of young players, especially there's a link there between Germany and and, and the US. US. A lot yeah. of young players mm, are yeah, there is, from yeah. between Germany and the mm, US. Yeah, yeah. Or well, at least a few. So I thought, yeah, man, it's it's possible to go out and then do that. And um, and then I fly out there, and then two weeks later, COVID hits. Mm. I fly out there. My mum came that week. Found a house, found an apartment. Blah blah blah. Introduced me to my cousins and uncles that I had in different parts of New Jersey that oh, I'd never, wow. I didn't know about. Type of yeah. thing. Takes me the full like you know we do our stop offs. So I just feel at home. She flies back um, with my ex-missus at the time. And then um, COVID hits, man. And then psh, go the whole rest of the year without seeing nobody from these sides, without being able to travel, without them being able to travel. Mm. Obviously, we're locked up for three months in our houses. And um, yeah, so COVID hits, what all was, stops. Yeah. So, yeah, man, so all what, stops. So obviously, well, once COVID hit, Obviously, you're, you're in America now. Whole different environment. COVID hits, you're locked up inside. Can't play football. Coming back to football, obviously, during COVID, what was that like? Especially at a new club still as well. Like. Yeah, so it was weird. It was very strange. Fitness is God knows where. You've just been running around on concrete mm. for the past three months. Now you're back in on the balls, haven't touched the ball. I remember, look, I look at pictures now of that time. And I thought I was working out in the, in, in the house, in the apartment, but I look skinny. I look skinny. My, oh my gosh, my hair, my trim was a mess. Um, 
then obviously you get back to train and it's just tough. The Red Bull system is tough in itself. Before you even move on to that, yeah, <laughs> I want to bring up a little joke still. Mm. I remember I went to one of your stories on, on the snap and that, yeah, and I think it was on your, one of your first interactions with the ball again. And you mm. put up a little, like, a little, little clip of you, of you like, first touching the ball again and your touch was off and you just bantering about it and you're just like, yeah, but man, allow me, I ain't kick ball in time. Like, it was making me, I remember that one snap I saw still. There was a return to play protocol in America and it started off with not being able to come into contact with other players. Mm. So we'd have like, literally we get cones and we have our own little drills, but there's only four players per pitch and we're only allowed in the court of the pitch each. Yeah. Bro, them first, that first week was, <laughs> that was different, one. man. That was different still. Cause I reckon since starting playing the game, bro, probably never went that long without that kicking ball. That kicking the ball, do you mm. get it? Mm. Obviously, getting back to games and that and travelling, what was that like during the COVID period as well? And obviously playing in the MLS bubble. Yeah, the, the bubble. Let me not forget the bubble. We um done a similar thing to the NBA. Mm. We all flew out to Florida. What, Orlando as well? Orlando, yeah. Oh, shit. They, we had planned it before they did. We had this nice hotel planned and then they decided to do the same thing. And obviously, being the NBA, they took our hotel. Yeah, of course. You yeah. don't care about soccer out there. <laughs> yeah, so um, now we've done the bubble. We went to Orlando, played like a little tournament, returned to play tournament. And um, that, was, that was a good experience. It was, it was obviously strange, but mm. they had it all patterned. They had fan noise. They, it was nice. It was nice. They made it as realistic as they could mm. so that there was a bit of an atmosphere so that it didn't feel like it was just playing training games. Yeah. I want to ask you as well because I see um, a video of, of LeBron. Mm. He was saying that he like no matter what, he will never ever go to Orlando or never back to Orlando because of what it was like playing in the bubble. And like, he said it's a myth. He hated it. They had a few. They was out there for a while. Yeah. Like, we was out there for less time than they were. But um, I, I get it. Like I can imagine for them just three months or whatever it might have been in a hotel. 24-7, seeing their family not look like COVID was a crazy time. A crazy bro. time, so. It affected a lot of people in different ways. I think even Thierry Henry, he might have, he might have said it. He he didn't see his family for for almost a year, I think, mm. which led to him then leaving his job in um, Montreal. Mm. So it was just crazy. Obviously, people were affected in different ways, some more than others, but it was, it was, a, it was a mad time for everybody. So talk on that as well, when you like, obviously seeing Thierry out there as well, I remember he's a childhood hero, isn't it, being an Arsenal fan, like, yeah, man. you got to play in front of him as well, what was that like as well? Yeah, um, I met him in the bubble, obviously, in the hotel for the first time, and it was, bro, it was crazy, obviously he knew a lot of the Red Bull staff, having been there himself, playing, 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 playing career, them, like yeah. the kit men, the people that have been around longer, he knows them, and then he kind of stops and chats to them, and just saying hello, bro. I, like I've not had more than just a hello with him in that. But it was, just, bro. You know, you can imagine. It was enough, innit? It was enough, bro. Yeah, more yeah. than enough. And then um, I remember on once on the sideline one time, obviously playing against him a bit later in the season. Mm -hmm. um, I've taken a throw, and <laughs> this story is so relevant to anybody but me. And there's a picture of it. Oh, yeah, I've yeah, taken, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've taken a throw in now, and the ball's kind of slipped out of my hand, and I've gone. Like it was a far throw. It should have been pulled up by the Lino. And he's gone Lino. And I, as I've thrown, I've gone, um, oh my days. Because I've, I've just completely fumbled it. Yeah, fumbled yeah. it. Yeah. And the Lino's not seen it. He's Lino, Lino. It's a far throw, effing and blinding, whatever. And then he goes, he even said, oh my days. Oh my. Oh, he's a <laughs> London boy. You don't understand what he's talking about. He said, oh. And I'm like, and I look back at him and I kind of stop my tongue out and give him a cheeky, like, wink. And that story is completely irrelevant to anybody, but that's my moment but, with Thierry, yeah, 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 but you yeah, yeah. get it. Like, you got to cherish that one. Yeah, man, 100%. 100%. So you're finishing off the season with the second team at New York Red Bulls. From there, what's the, what's the, what's the next process? What's the, what's, the, what's the next move? Yeah, man, I finish off the year, come back to London, obviously. In fact, I, you know, come back to London, go on holiday, mm. clear my mind, clear my head. Come back and um, Jamie Waller, who I mentioned, who was my... Um, on the 13s coach at Palace. Give him a bar, go see him, because my little brother trained with his team actually. Mm -hmm. Go see him and he says, oh, have you spoken to Ben? Ben who's swin at Swindon at the time. I'm like, I haven't actually. He's like, let me give ben a, ring, ben a ring and you can go up there and train. I'm like, cool, mm. don't mind. Like, I'm not really trying to, trying to see my options, assess my options. Think if I want to come back to England or not. And then I go, um, I go train with Swindon. And after a couple of days, Ben um, says to me, 
we weren't really looking for a right back, but our, we just lost the guy. Do you want to sign? And I'm like, leave me to the end of the week. Like, let me think about it. Let me think about it. I'm not sure what I want to do yet. It's League Two. I'm not, you know. I'll be honest, I wasn't really digging that at the time, but then I trained for the rest of the week and I'm like, I just I like I like it man. I like the English game is different, the English locker room yeah, is different. You can't beat it, innit? You can't beat that banner. It brought me back to <coughs> Palace days. It brought me back to Palace days, man. So football being football, it took a bit longer than it should have, but mm. in the end, get a deal over the line with them. And then I'm back in England, man. Back playing in the EFL. Actually, for the first time. Playing the EFL and enjoying it, man. Proper enjoying it. Like Swindon will always hold a place in my heart because the the fans there they took a liking to me. I, I just enjoyed it, man. We went on a run. Yeah, good little spell at Swindon. Then obviously got to the playoffs as well. Yeah, man. Went on a playoff. Well, not quite a playoff run. Did the um, semis. Won the first game. Harshly done in the second. Harshly done by in the second on pens to Port Vale. That was tough, man. But then, um, then yeah, man. Then the summer comes and I'm a free agent, having had a good end to the season. And then it's like, let's let's start moving up the ladder again, isn't it? So um so yeah man, it was it was pretty simple. It, as simple as it could have been. Ben's left, he's gone to Charlton. Um does he want me? Do they need the position? Yes he does, yes they do. Probably the easiest transfer, it was, you know, the easiest transfer you could ever get done. Easy like that? Yeah, yeah, because obviously he um he bells me, had the same agent as him by this stage in England and um, yeah, got the deal done. Bob's run all quick, got in there for pre-season, first day of pre-season, so yeah. So currently at Charlton, yeah. How, do you, how obviously for those that don't know, currently currently injured, but starting at Charlton, how how's it how is it how was it? How's it been so far bar the injury that you currently have? Um Barring injury, it's been it's been perfect. It's it's nice being back home, but obviously, as you can imagine, uh, destination has never been a problem for me. Mm -hmm. If it was, I would have never moved mm -hmm. to Germany and then even further away. So it's nice. It's an added bonus being around friends and family, and now it may become a thing where I might like to stay around. But the same way, it's best thing for my career. But yeah, now Charlton's been um, Charlton's been amazing. Um, had a spell on the sidelines through injury, come back doing well thanks to the physio team at Charlton and all the people that I um, work with away from there as well. Sports scientists, medical team, chiropractors, lots of people I'm very close to that, that do me, sort me, sort me out. And um, yeah, come back and playing. We go on a little bit of a run, get back up the table again and then um, got a few clean sheets, a few wins on the bounce, like I said. And then um, in that 4-4 game, the, the crazy 4-4 oh, mm. at home to Ipswich, yeah. I got injured in the seventh minute of that. And it ended up being a ruptured quad, ruptured rec frame tendon. And um, been out since, man. Been out since. Had surgery on it. It's been three months. And hopefully I'm about a month away at the time of recording. Fingers crossed, no, um, no setbacks. No and, um, setbacks yeah, and hopefully you can get back in and start yeah, get back flying up and down the right again, man. That's good, that's good, man. So, hopefully, hope when you come back from injury, hope to obviously help chart and progress for the rest of the season, mm -hmm. what may be left of it. Mm -hmm. Other than that, how long would you say you got left on your deal with them? I got 18 months, so I got another year this season, and then they got an option as well. Okay, cool, that's good. But yeah, so it's a good place to be at though, because not just am I not at the level that I think I can excel to, because I think I got more than just league one in me but the club's at the same place so we're all fighting for the same thing mm -hmm. like they they don't want to be at they don't want to be in league oh, one it's a massive club it's a massive, massive club. club premier league heritage bro. there we go so it's a place where like if all going well we can all just move up together mm -hmm. you know maybe it might be a case of doing a long stint at the club you know it'd be, it'd, it'd be amazing it's it's close to home which i said like i said it's not really a big deal for me but the added bonus cherry on top you're around your friends and family like i'm literally back at my mum's, so it doesn't get much better. better than that, yeah. So yeah, nah, Charlton's is a top club to be at. Everybody's got the same goals and ambitions and that's to climb. So I can't complain at the minute, man, I really can't. Okay, so I wouldn't say selfishly speaking, but on a personal note now, 
where would you like see yourself in the next, or would you see yourself, your hope, your career, the direction it goes in, in the next five to ten years? Um, because yeah, bro, the ten years might be all I got. Uh, there's longevity. There's longevity in, in careers nowadays, bro. Look at Ronaldo playing, still playing at 38 years old. Yeah, you know what I mean? The 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 what's it? The modern day footballer has more of a lifespan now, of a, of a playing career wise, anyway. So yeah, at that know. top level, there's things that people do that yeah you Keeps can really there. extend it. Mm. So yeah, I'm just trying to get, trying to get to the top level, man. We went to Old Trafford the other day, and I couldn't play the Carabao Cup. Obviously, I couldn't play because I was injured. But I went and I watched the lads. Bro, it made me dream again, bro. Oh, can I imagine? Yeah. It's like, it's the theatre of dreams for a reason. reason. And it made me dream again, so... Without sounding stupid, obviously, just the top, bro. Like, once you get into the champ, anything's possible. Anything's possible. You're just a, you're just a, mm-hmm. um, a promotion away. Mm-hmm. So, I'm going to do my best to get myself and Charlton there. And then, bro, from there... Literally, bro, anything. Obviously, United is a long shot. <laughs> but just to play in them type of stadiums, you know, maybe not weekly, but you get me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Regularly. Yeah, being around it. Being around it. It has to be the dream. And I'll push as hard as I can for it. And then if I fall a bit short, then I'm still, I've given it my all, you know? Of course. Of course, man. Well, what more? You want, anything you want to touch on? Tell us about that you've got coming up or... Maybe outside of football, anything you like outside of football? Or... Yeah, man. I mean, there's a lot I like outside of football. I'm not really doing much. I'm trying to focus on getting back to injury at the minute, you know. But, you know, there's just, there's, there's a lot of, hopefully, one of my big things is trying to be more than just a footballer. Because I know there's like a stigma that, there's a stigma around footballers. Mm. And sometimes it can be true. Sometimes it can be true, so I'm just trying to be as well-rounded and individual as possible because that's the way that my dad would, has raised me, my mum and dad raised me, and my dad would want me to be. So I'm just trying to be as well-rounded and individual as possible, have my um, eggs in a few different baskets, and um, yeah, just try to be a good person, man. Try to inspire youth, Try to even if it's you know people that are not as young, but just try to inspire people to make the most of the gift that they're given. Yeah, that's good, man. That's good. I really like that. And that leads me on to my next question as well. So, in regards to, like, lifestyle as a professional footballer, um, being paid, like, coming full-time and being paid, like, what's that like as well, on the flip side? Like, how do you, how would you deal with that at first, when you first start to get, like, a good, decent check? Um, how did you keep yourself grounded? How did you keep yourself, like, on the straight and narrow? I think always wanting more, kind of, helped I never ever felt like I was on money money I never really have been so there's never been like I've never had enough to go crazy <laughs> so that was kind of forced upon me um but yeah obviously like I say my parents man my parents and obviously there's things that I've done that they probably wouldn't agree with but there's also I've seen it go the other way you know with players that can really just go a bit crazy with it so I tried to I try to look after what I got. It's not about how much you get, but it's about how much you keep. Mm, mm, for real. And now getting into, like I say, maybe the last 10 years, if I'm blessed of your career, it's like, you almost start to, f- I do anyway, I start to think, what next? And how do I make this last till I'm 80, bro? Because mm. this mm. salary, as a footballer, might be the most you ever earn. Yeah, and it's all mm. about making it last the next, bro, you've got more than half your life. Yeah. It's scary to think about. So obviously in regards to like, Obviously, get become a professional footballer and getting paid professional wages for play, playing full time and that. How did you like? How did you deal with that? How was navigating that kind of lifestyle? Um, obviously, there's 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 pros to to being a footballer. I've never been on crazy money anyway, so I've never had you know to worry about doing madness because I've never had enough yeah. to do that. <laughs> Hopefully, one day. Yeah. But like I like I said, I come from a good humble um, household obviously there'll be stuff that I've done that my parents may not have agreed with but there's also a lot I've done for them or mm. I try to help as much as I can especially now um, so yeah like it's just coming from humble beginnings and understanding humility and um, also you know there's still that drive for more so I've never been I've never looked and thought yeah this is me and I'm going to just splurge it because I always want more, I always want more. And that's obviously not just financially, that's 
in the game mm -hmm. and as you rise yeah. up in the game then naturally everything you find com that comes with it there you it? go yeah. so there's a there's a big upside um there's a big upside and i'm trying to i'm trying to get there because this career is short i might be in my last 10 years and that's by god's grace so it's about making what you earn in 20 years stretch the next 60 bro and thinking about that is crazy so um yeah that's my focus at the minute have my eggs in a few different baskets and just longevity good man post 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 football career obviously you don't look that far ahead and wish nothing else other than that but you're looking to get into coaching punditry anything like that i do look man because like i, I like i said this thing this thing really does come come at you quick Punditry, yeah, I like being in front of a camera, man. I can't lie. I done my first stint on Charlton TV the other day and I took to it like a duck to water. This is not my yeah. words. That's what they told me. Yeah, I hear that. <laughs> <laughs> so, nah, that, that is a... I'm coming for Michael Richards, man. I'm yeah. coming for you, bro. I'm coming for me. I'm coming for you. Where? Yeah. Um, punditry is interesting. Obviously, I love music, bro. I would love to somehow dabble in that field and that's not making music. That's not in any way, that's just being in and around it. Maybe hopefully one day own a recording yeah. studio. You know, I know a lot of people in that industry, A and R's, management, etc. etc. Who knows? I wanna have this like long term dream of bringing R and B back. Amen. Real R and B though. The yeah, real R and B. UK R and B, like start a whole new thing. Cause I feel like it's not there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of young young men and women out there now that are trying to do their thing and um yeah man bring that back to the uk trust me man we're, we're, we're missing we're missing that though we're missing proper r and B. I i feel like that's got lost it has man as the years have obviously gone through but as we get older and our generation starts to not want to get in the car and listen to so much boom 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 boom, 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 boom. Sure. and we realize we can just listen to, like you know you want to be with your wife your girlfriend your shorty listen to good music man so let's trust bring that me. to the uk man wow. I'd love to hear that, man. Yeah, man. I'd love to hear that, but, bro, I think, that's, I think that's about it, man. Thank you for your time, you know what I'm saying, bro? Come on, bro. Long time. Good friend, isn't it? Always, it's been bro. a pleasure, from, man. From young. From young, young, really, really young. Literally. Trust me. We've been in different places in life, and we're here, bro. Come on, man. Amen. But, no, love to see you, man. Come Great on, to see you as always, and um, good luck with your career, obviously, moving forward and that. Love, my bro. Appreciate you. Thank you, bro. Thank you.